When my children were small and feeling threatened, my husband and I had a favorite refrain. God is bigger than the boogeyman. He's bigger than Godzilla or the monsters on TV. Catherine and Davy learned, along with Junior Asparagus, that God was watching out for them. And the voice was much better on the video, trust me. Veggie Tales changed the landscape of children's videos and impacted the life of its creator more than I think he ever could have imagined. Phil Vischer. Hi there. I have so looked forward to getting together with you again. Thank you. Yeah, it's been a while. It's good to be back. I think we need more silly songs to boost our immune system. Yes, yes, we need more belly laughs. And silly, <laughs> silly songs produce belly laughs. Well, this story isn't all about laughter uh, or happy things at mm -hmm. uh, the outset. But some people don't know about mm -hmm. Veggie Tales. And, and actually, I remember you being here in the 90s. And we were wondering, you were wondering at that point, will this thing take off? Right. Are we going to make it? <clears throat> Right. Yeah, way back in 1990, I was a, a starving artist, computer animator in Chicago, and uh, I'd just gotten married, newly married. Uh, my wife and I had 10 bucks. We were down to our last 10 bucks, and I was staring at a tomato and a cucumber on my computer screen, trying to figure out how I could use them to spread biblical truth, basically to teach kids about God's love. Um, if you go to 1993, three years later, we just released our very first video, Where's God When I'm Scared? That song was the first VeggieTales song ever written, the one that you just sung. Um, and we were still trying to figure it. We were still starving artists, but you know, now at least we had a video. Uh, if you go all the way to the year 2000, though, I had built, by that point, the largest animation studio in between the coasts. We'd sold 30 million VeggieTales videos. It was the most successful direct-to-video series in history, not just Christian videos, but of any kind of videos. Apparently a third of American homes with young children a third of American homes videos. with young children have bought at least one VeggieTales video. I mean, it's, it's amazing how God used it to tell little stories about his love you know, to kids who would never go to church, you know, who never could have bumped into that any other way. It was just amazing to see it happen. And at about that time, um, I think I was named in a PBS special, one of 10 people to watch in worldwide religion. So I mean, from the outside, it looked like everything was working. You know, Time everything and was, Newsweek and other magazines. I was getting calls from the Wall Street Journal, from Time, from Newsweek. You know, I was just, I was amazed that all my dreams were coming true. What I wanted to do for God, my dream to build what I thought could be, you know, a Christian Disney. It was all coming true. Um, unfortunately, on the inside of the company, everything was starting to fall apart. And we had grown too fast. I didn't go to business school. I got kicked out of Bible college after three semesters for failing chapel. Uh, oh. So I did not have the education that really would have come in handy to run a business that at that point had 210 people in it. Um, and things, 200 animators. Alone. 200 animators. Wow. Yeah, things were starting to fall apart. They were just coming apart at the seams. We finally ended up, we produced our own feature film. We were doing shows in theme parks. We were doing books. We were doing you know, music. Um, but we ran out of money. We spent too much. We grew too fast. We made some bad you know, sales projections. We ended up in a lawsuit with a former distributor who said we We'd breached a verbal agreement. Um, a year later, the lawsuit was overturned, but in the meantime, we lost. And Everything. A, a judge in uh, Dallas, Texas, granted them an $11 million judgment against my company and it and put us into bankruptcy. So in November of 2003, I found myself, you know, after this amazing journey, sitting in the back row of a bankruptcy courtroom in Chicago, Illinois, watching everything I had done, every character I'd created, every song I'd written, every story I had told, get packed up in a box and sold to the highest bidder. And I could not figure out why God would let that happen. You know, I didn't blame him. I never said, you know, you did this to me. But what I did say was, you could have helped. You know, why didn't you show up in the courtroom? Why didn't you show up, you know, when our movie came out? I mean, it did pretty well, but if it Jonah. had... Jonah. Uh, yes, Jonah, VeggieTales movie. You know, I was thinking it was supposed to do about this much at the box office, but if it did twice that, you know, then I probably could have paid off all the debts and kept it going. You know, I thought, well, God could do that, but he didn't. And I couldn't understand why. And finally, all my friends, you know, and, and the company that I'd built were all packed up and relocated to Nashville, Tennessee. I'm in Chicago still. And it left me sitting there by myself. I felt like with this God that had watched me fall down the stairs and hadn't raised a finger to help. You know, and then slowly, I started listening. And he started whispering to me, first through other people, and then finally directly. But he started to show me what I had done. Now, the first of all, he started to point out how miserable I had become, because I really wasn't designed to run a 200-person company. Um, I ended up working myself so hard 
trying to keep this together that I got pericarditis one year, which is a viral infection in your heart, which oh. knocked me out for about almost a year in terms of my energy. Uh, the next year I got shingles, which is entirely stress related. And typically you don't get it in your 30s, you get it in your 70s. If Dr. Colbert was here, he'd say, are you <laughs> would, listening to your would, body, <laughs> Phil? <laughs> he would start to... Do we he, need a two by four? Say, lie down, we need to talk. Um, but I was rolling this rock up a hill that I felt I'd been called to roll, to build a Christian Disney, to be a Christian Disney. And what God pointed out to me was that he didn't call me to do that. He really called me to tell the stories that he laid on my heart. And I was grafting on all these other things, a lot out of my own insecurity. You know, I was a, uh, uh, raised by a single mom. My dad walked out when I was nine. I was a middle child. I was shy. You know, I spent my high school years in the basement making films, not going to the prom or, you know, hanging out with friends. And I felt invisible. And once things started working, you I started to... You were somebody. I was somebody. I started to feel good about myself. And I thought, okay, I'm going to do even more. And I got so busy that I almost killed myself. And what I discovered is God didn't let it fall apart because he didn't love me. He let it fall apart because he loved me so much. And he didn't want to see me in that shape. What I discovered is I had made the work I was doing for God more important to me than my relationship with God. Boy, I think we all find ourselves there at yes, some point in the journey. I had made my dream more important than God. I want to do a sidetrack here because not only did you grow up without a present affirming father figure, which we know is so important mm -hmm. in your identity and your destiny, but you had this heavy duty pressure of the forefathers. Tell us yes. who your great grandfathers were. My, uh, well, my great grandfather on my father's side uh, went to A.W. Tozer's church in Toledo, Ohio, and used to have uh, Tozer, who's now a very famous theologian and author. This is a very well-worn classic, yes, the best the of A.W. Tozer. Tozer. <laughs>